Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. We're here for some more ladder grinding with the uh, Mono White Humans deck. Uh, no changes since yesterday, been really happy with it so far. And let's go ahead and jump in here in just a moment. Um, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. Uh, for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys do mean the world to me. And I do also want to um, give a big thank you to all of my members. Um, this is a great way to help support my channel. It's a great way to get early access to my content for as little as $1.99 a month. And if you want to consider becoming a member, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, um, just a, another note here before we jump in. The deck list will be in the description, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com. And then there will also be a link to my other playlists in the description if you're interested. All right, let's get into some games. I feel pretty good with where the removal is at right now. We've got, I guess, uh, 14 different sources of removal. So hopefully we have enough uh, basics to support the ossifications. I think we're running 15 planes, so hopefully we'll get there, but this hand looks good. Okay, very happy to see a basic planes. Yeah, and I think that's a big enough threat that we just want to go ahead and get rid of that right away. Could also drop Adversary here to try to start gaining some life, but if they've got removal for it, it's so bad. Yeah, double ancestral anger is pretty rough. But here I think we just go veteran into Thalia. Could also go veteran plus ossification. Um, just they don't have like a good target for demonic ruckus. But if they've got another creature in hand, could be rough. Um, other option here is veteran plus adversary. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty good too. Hmm. I guess getting the adversary on the board feels pretty good. If we can have it survive for even a turn, just amazing. Although if they have any kind of removal for it, it's not great. If we play Thalia, that'll make the Ruckus cost more mana, so that could be pretty good. Hmm. Either way, I think I'm playing Veteran. Yeah, I think I just want to go Adversary here and just hopefully try to stabilize with it. Like, I'm just hoping they can't do 12 in this single turn.
definitely hoping to be able to swing in at least once with the adversary. Looks like they've got other plans. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but we do have at least veteran here, so can hopefully try to get some life going. Okay, now they've got another demonic ruckus. So now I think we want to probably just go ossification here and try to stabilize. They will draw a card, which is annoying. Um, but I mean, this etching is becoming a huge problem. I wish we could double spell, but it just, I think it's just kind of damage control right now. And then I don't see us blocking here. Okay, another land was great. Uh, we can at least double spell. Um, yeah, I guess we just go Thalia plus Vanguard. But we're in a super rough position here. Don't usually see Thrill Seeker in this kind of deck. I guess it's a slightly different build. Yeah, so if they have a removal here, it could be pretty brutal. Um, I think we've just sort of got to hope they haven't got, like... <sighs> yeah, because if they have, like, extra pump, if they have, like, Monstrous Rage, they can just essentially one-shot us if we let it through. So if they have Monstrous Rage here, pushing seven, um, we want to make sure that we can kill it, so we've got to block with at least five power. I guess if we block with like Veteran plus Thalia, we can go down to, to six, potentially. I do want to keep the Veteran around if at all possible, but Copper Coat's pretty nice too. And we can replay Veteran. Yeah, I think... I think block like this, maybe. Yeah, all the card replacement between like the Demonic Ruckus and Ancestral Anger is just super rough. I think we probably want, I guess we could just go like Vanguard plus Thalia here. Getting the Veteran out also feels pretty good, but 
holding them back seems pretty important too. So if they've got pump here, they could definitely blow us out. Yeah, that was unfortunate. We just want to get that out of their hand though. Yeah, so now if they push, if they have, I guess if they have like another Monstrous Rage. So the problem is if they have any kind of burn and we try to double block, they just get them both. I suppose we could try to race here, but it's just so awkward. Could try to call their bluff. Okay, that was a fantastic draw. If we can dodge burn for a turn, potentially stabilize here. That wow, feels pretty good. Yeah, now with the Ganjo backup, we should be in a pretty good spot. Here, I think we just need Ganjo just to keep our life total high. Like we're losing a little bit of value from not being able to use recruitment officer, but I think it's fine. That works too. Now we're at high enough life total, we could uh, just bash it with everybody. Not worried about trading here. Good still Ganjo. I think actually a Ganjo in here feels good, pretty good. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Nice. Pretty kind of close back and forth there for a while in that game, though. I think that, yeah, having the full play set of Intrepid Adversary is really important, just making sure we get that life, life gain. Okay, hand looks good. Nice potential one, two, three, if we need the march on one.
I think we don't want to lose any advantage here or any card advantage, so we can just go ahead and just let this take the one. And yeah, I think we would just want to set up Vanguard, even if they kill it, just being able to have a slightly less likely chance of them killing our Adeline. Now I think if we can just hold out for a turn, soak the damage, uh, we don't want to block with Adeline this turn if at all possible. Then we can start generating some tokens and take over the game. I think we put, yeah, I think we definitely want to potentially just march the scamp um, if they've got pump or at least have access to it. Could also just ossification here. Or even just use a ganjo. Um, hmm. Could also just play evangelist and then hold up march. That feels pretty good too. I think I'm actually going to slow it down though and just ossific ossification here. Then I think we want to hang on to our Iganjo and just hold up March. Although I guess if we've got double double march, we can just replace the Aganjo here and then hold up for um, for March along the Swift Spears. That's probably fine. This way if they try to use like um, Monstrous Rage or something like that, we can march in response. We want to block like this so we can just march for one instead of having to pitch a card. Okay, now we can march the Codebreaker in response. do it yeah having access to march is just really important in these kind of matchups i think and you definitely want to respect scamp because they can effectively use double damage if they can use like their other sacrifice effects after pumping so just getting rid of their scamp right away seemed pretty good
But yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do probably um, a couple more uh, reps here, just uh, grinding on ladder, and then probably take this through another um, best of one standard event just to see kind of how it does. It's just kind of me getting more used to playing it, also ironing out some of the kinks, it's been minor deck changes. Really happy with it so far right now. I think it's in a really good spot. Yeah, I guess, hmm, probably just want to go Adversary so we can like Knight Errant for more, even though this being a 3-1 is not amazing. Um, question is, do we want to attack through here just to kind of minimize? Since we've got Knight Errant, I guess we don't. We probably just play this and pass. Like, there's an argument for going Officer here, but I think just being able to be a little bit more efficient with our land... Um, and mana is a little bit more important. And then, like, depending, like, what they do, we could potentially add a lean next turn or just go for Knight Errant. I think Knight Errant for three is pretty good. Because then we can get access to Brutal Cathar. Which we're definitely going to want against Warden. Or if they have, like, their own Knight Errant. Question is, do they have the like, Gleeful Demolition to go with it? Yeah, it looks like they do. So yeah, going for Brutal Cathar seems really good. Although, <laughs> it's funny, because now we have like a really nice turn to like Adeline and get in for some damage, so... Oof. Yeah. I think we're gaining enough life here. We could probably take like a turn off on Brutal Cathar. So maybe we just go Adeline push. That still feels really good. I guess if they have Case, it's pretty rough. But it's like so hard to turn down like the life link and the extra dude off the attack. I think it's still worth it. Like, them having case here is probably just, like, the worst. And I think they run four copies. There's a decent chance they have it. Then we'd probably need to, like, top deck march or something like that to deal with it. But if they just want to like scry and push in the air, we're totally fine with that. Yeah, it's funny when I was playing this deck, like a lot of times when I had case, like it just was really bad for whatever reason against like control, but it's so good against the aggro mirror. I mean, you know, all things considered, like this is pretty bad too, right? Now they're just like setting up for a big Imidane's recruiter. And still pushing in the air. Yeah, I will say this is probably a tougher matchup than Mono Red, just because like if we don't have March for their Gleeful Demolition, it's so bad. Yeah, because now we can't really go, like, 
full knight errant into brutal cathar to try to solve our problems because they just have imidane's recruiter to push with everything else so And they will, I'm sure they'll like snap block Knight Errant to Adeline here. So, don't know that we want to make that trade right now. So, like next turn, if they have like, oh, I suppose if they have like another Gleeful Demolition into Imidanes, we're probably just dead. But if they have like maybe a one drop plus Imidanes, they're pushing. 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 20, 25. So we need like at least one blocker. Yeah, I think I, I, think I want to save the Adeline for now. Thar seems really good. Evangelist is also interesting. Um, I think we just want all the Brutal Cathars, though. Like, they're better against them since they don't have much removal. And this can, like, pave the way for our Adeline. Yeah, so I guess, like, if they have, like, Lethal Demolition plus recruiter here that could get us but they need like the land and the gleeful demolition otherwise we just like block with knight errant and adeline and go to like five and swing back for a lot Ooh, double Imidans, okay, interesting. So if we just take 15 here and Brutal Cathar their Imidanes, or, or Brutal Cathar their Warden, they have two blocks, block, block. We're pushing three, five, seven, nine, 13. Yeah, they're dead. Okay, that works. So yeah, we just take it. So easy to miscalculate with these big, uh, big armies back and forth. I've definitely done it many times. I mean, that works too. That should be exact lethal. All right, yeah, three and zero. Really happy. Um, let's take a quick look at the stats. All right, currently eighty-three percent win rate, uh, ten wins and two losses. 
So starting to up the, uh, the win rate here against mono red, which is great. Um, and yeah, doing great against everything else. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Also, I would be open to maybe doing like um, like a best of one standard event for like another like top tier deck that's playing in the format right now. Um, so I could do that. I won't have a lot of experience with it, but I'm open to it. So let me know what you guys think. See you next time. Mm -hmm.